Friends, may I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Just a forewarning, when I preach from down here, it means I'm going to ask a question or two. Uh, and the questions I ask are not meant to be rhetorical questions. They're actual questions. So be prepared to offer your thoughts um, and your, your ideas. So I'm going to start with a question. Well, actually, I'm going to start with a little story and then a question. So years ago, I'm getting my hair cut. Um, and the, the, the woman who's cutting my hair asks me a question. She asks, are people... Are we humans animals or not? So we had a fascinating conversation about, and I, of course, answered that, well, yes, we are animals. We are part of the animal kingdom and went on to say all the things that make us animals. Um, now, that was just a kind of a interesting scientific conversation. Well, the next time, about a month later, I went to get my hair cut, and I was talking with my, uh, the, the woman who cuts my hair at the time, and she says to me, now you realize I almost lost a customer last month. Really, I said. Why? Well, they were very upset about our conversation. I said, well, what were they upset about? That you thought we were animals. Well, that was an interesting insight. Uh, for we are. And of course, we're not simply animals. So while we can talk about all of the scientific reasons that place us squarely within the animal kingdom, my first question this morning is, what makes us more? Yes. To, to, to mix reason and religion. Not necessarily this religion, but whichever one. Sure. So reason is one of the things that makes us distinct from the rest of the animal kingdom. Another is the fact that we have and share religion, not a particular religion, but the capacity for religion, that capacity to, um, to look beyond ourselves, both in time um, and in creation. What else makes us? Human, shall we say. We're existential. We're existential. We think beyond ourselves. We think of our creation. We think of our death. We think of what lies beyond us. Yes. Now, the, I have to say, the 8 o'clock congregation, congregation had five answers. We ought to be able to come up with more than them. All right. Maddie and then Ted. Haircuts. <laughs> we cut our hair. We have a sense of beauty and aesthetic. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. Imagination. Imagination. I'm actually going to use that as my jumping off point uh, because it, it is uh, part of um, our identity today and our lesson today. You know, all of these things that make us human, that, uh, those things that make us more than uh, a, a, an animal at its heart, our capacity to reason, to think beyond ourselves, to be aware of beauty, to create and imagine and become aware of that which created us. The ability to dream, to imagine that which is not yet. All of these things that make us human are profoundly divine. They are rooted in our Creator. And they are what uniquely express us as humans. And the capacity to dream. We often talk of, and we say it in our creeds, God the Creator. We speak of God the Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. But to create is the second act of dreaming. In order to create something, an individual has to imagine what doesn't already exist, has to imagine something of good and quality and a pathway to it in order that their hands might, with industry, bring it to life. 
And so the first story of creation is a story not only of creation, but it is a, a story of God's first dream. God's first dream for us as a people. God's first dream for all of creation, to bring creation to life in a particular way. And interestingly, the last story we hear of, of in Scripture is of God's continued dream. John writes in exile, After this I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. John is seeing into God's dream for humanity. You know, today we have all these ways of making ourselves distinct, of distinguishing peoples and households. For a moment, let's think again. What are the ways that we distinguish ourselves? The ways that we set ourselves into tribes or languages? peoples or nations <coughs> education right status and education go so often hand in hand we separate ourselves by schools by types of education professions doctors and lawyers nurses and teachers carpenters mechanics all into our separate unions and guilds. Pardon me? The languages speaking? Yes. Literally the different languages. What a remarkable thing when one learns the language of another, kind of trans, not transgresses, but um, bridges the chasm of language that so often divides us. The flags we bear? The politics we share or don't share. <laughs> We're really good as humans at dividing ourselves. And yet God has always dreamed that we would overcome our divisions. That God's dream has in fact always been that we will be one. And so we as a church, not just the Episcopal Church, but the Christian community, has shared a common practice to make this unique vision and dream of God a reality. Now, I know with our traditions, many a times we use them to divide ourselves to our shame. But this tradition and practice, this right that we're about to share this morning, is actually always about reminding us who we are. And not just who we are within this circle of friendship, but who we are at our core. In a few minutes, we will celebrate the rite of Christian baptism. We will gather around this font that stands before us, this font that stands behind me. We will gather with our children and we will hold young children in our arms and we will asperse them, just pour a little water over their heads, proclaiming them to be baptized in the, the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, to our shame at times we have said that this distinguishes us from the peoples of the earth. When in fact it's what binds us to one another and to all the peoples of the earth. For we will proclaim to our children what God has been proclaiming to all children, what God proclaimed to Jesus on that day of his baptism, the same message that God holds for all, that they are beloved. In them, God is well pleased. You see, God has dreamt each of these children into being with love and passion, and hope. 
And the, God has surrounded them, not only with mothers and fathers, brothers or sisters, but a whole community of brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers. Calabash, cousins, as we would say back home in Hawaii. This baptism reminds us that we are in fact bound together into one holy family that bridges all languages, all peoples, all tribes, and as all nations, that the great truth of our identity is our adoption and belovedness in God. God dreamt us into being. God continues to dream a new community into life. God asks us now to be co-creators of this new way, a way of belovedness, a way of friendship, a way of grace and of love. May we be such a community here in this place. May we together enlarge and expand this community of grace with all whom we meet. Amen.